Fighting a Russian sucks. It always sucks. If you've been in a gym, you've had to spar with a Russian fighter, it's horrible. To be a Russian mixed martial artist means you have no mercy. It's a little scary. If you're gonna fight a Russian, all you think about is Rocky. Oh, he's hurt! That is it! That is over! Bottom line, they're tough nose. You destroy to survive. The Russian fighting spirit is survival. They will eat nails. My good right hand! For much of the past decade, the most feared MMA fighter in the world was the explosive Russian heavyweight, Fedor Emelianenko. Now, a whole crop of Russian fighters are emerging in Fedor's wake, continuing his legacy of stone-eyed brutality and slowly but surely taking over the sport. The Russian fighters come into the cage with a spirit that you just don't see that often. And man, it makes for incredibly exciting fights. Even when some of these guys started having success, people didn't piece it together. Well, now they're starting to piece it together. Two world champions are already crowned. A third title shot is imminent. And many more contenders are on the horizon. Prepare yourselves, America. The Russians are coming. And their mission is total domination. During Fedor's decade of dominance, the immense shadow he cast over the sport was enough to make Russia into one of the world's capitals of mixed martial arts. I don't know if it'd be fair to call Fedor Lenenko the Michael Jordan of MMA, but in terms of Russians, he is the Michael Jordan. He is the guy. When he retired in 2010, he left a void in Russian MMA, but it was quickly filled by an upstart band of mixed martial artists who are carrying on in Fedor's tradition. Today, Bellator features no less than 12 Russian fighters, including two world champions. Alexander Slavenko is Bellator's new middleweight world champion. Leading the charge is a core group of teammates from Russia's premier MMA team, Rus Fighters Sport Club. Their captain is the man who started the Russian invasion. He's also Bellator's middleweight champion. We call me Storm. My name is Alexander Shlemenko. Shlemenko got the guillotine! I do not believe it! A dominant performance from the Russian striker! The Russian invasion started with Shlemenko. And we'd heard the accolades, we'd seen the fight footage. And then when he came here, he lived up to the hype and he exceeded it. Following in Shlemenko's Bellator footsteps are his two young protégés. My name is Alexander Tiger Sarnansky. Alexander Sarnovsky is a rising star of Bellator's lightweight ranks, a fighter many expected to vie for a title before an injury knocked him out of the season eight tournament. Oh, big right! Man, that was a great performance by Tiger Sarnovsky. They call me Spartan. My name is Andrei Koryshkov. At the age of 22, Andrei Koryshkov is undefeated and ready for his first world title shot on July 31st against Bellator's welterweight champ, Ben Askren. Big uppercut! Beautiful left, that's it! Phenomenal performance by Andrei Koryshkov! Ben Askren's the toughest puzzle in mixed martial arts. He's a 170-pound champion here. I'd be hard-pressed to say who beats him in the world. And there's the first takedown! Koreshkov's a monster on his own, but then you add to it the entire Russ Fighter team. He's not just facing one guy in Koreshkov, he's facing an entire team of some of the best fighters in the world. Koreshkov teeing off now! Big shots, there's the knee! With this new wave of Russian fighters coming into Bellator, I think they have a great, great chance of actually becoming a new Brazil, really dominating MMA in the future. That invasion has only gained strength this past year. When the six foot seven Russian giant Alexander Volkov won the Bellator Heavyweight Championship. Oh, he's hurt! Big shots from Alexander Volkov! We literally weren't going to put Volkov in the last heavyweight tournament. Alexander Shlomenko came to me and said, Volkov should be in, he'll win your heavyweight title. Another Russian heavyweight, Vitaly Minikov, reached the Bellator Summer Series Finals. Shabulat Shamalaya from Russia's Dagestan region blasted his way into a featherweight title. Shamalaya is looking to finish and he does! 
and Frodo Hasbulayev won the Season 8 Bantamweight Tournament with a tenacious style that's become synonymous with the Russians of Bellator. And that is it! A TKO win for Frodo Hasbulayev! But at the core of the Russian success in Bellator is a coach and fighter in Shlomenko and his two young stars, Andrei Korshkov and Tiger Sarnovsky. They train at a small gym in the remote, unforgiven city of Omsk, Siberia, where fighting has been a part of the culture for generations. Ну и вообще считаю, что жизнь в Сибири развила мой характер. She's Siberia. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. There's no heat. There's no fast food. There's no 7-Eleven. There's there's nothing to do but you stay in your cabin and you cut some wood and you go wrestle or now you go fight. Living here in Siberia, it's not just cold, it's uh, snow, it's wind, it's, it's everything combined. It's, it's just uh, toughens them up. It's not something just for the body, but it's mostly something for the head, for the heart. A nearby forest is where the fighters go for their cardio training. Siberian style. It looks like the old Rocky movies with Drago, with four feet of snow. Sometimes you use terminology like they're hardened. And sometimes it's just hyperbole and it really doesn't tie into who they really are. I think in the case of a lot of these Russian fighters, it actually does. Russian blood, it's first of all the blood of the blood. But when you go into the blood, you don't have any regret. Yes, of course, we feel this blood. Why? Because I will tell you that it's not more of the Siberian blood. It's a Slavian blood. It lives in us. And along with that spirit, a crucial part of their training regimen is an age-old Slavic tradition, banya, the local sauna ritual that involves extreme heat and then extreme cold, dropping into a 37-degree ice bath in the Erdish River. I feel great. Banya is a very good way to relax, as Мы в нашей команде ведем здоровый образ жизни, мы не пьем, не курим, не употребляем наркотики и никогда этим не занимались. Также баня это является второй тренировкой на сердечно-судистую систему. You can describe them, you should try it yourself. It's a very important part of the training. It trains your vascular system, like heart, and builds up your immune system. It just makes you a lot stronger. One more. of Oms instills in these fighters a mental strength that's become their calling card in the cage. Most notably with Shlomenko, who went from being Bellator's first Russian fighter to being Bellator's middleweight champion. У него прозвище Шторм. Он начинает постепенно и в итоге просто уничтожает своего соперника. As a fighter, Shlomenko is known as a risk taker. It's an attitude he brings to just about everything he does, inside the cage or out. Иногда тебя несет, что ты рискуешь, да, что ты сейчас ударишься. Koreshkov is the toughest test that Ben Askren has faced inside the Bellator cage to date. When that cage door closes, it doesn't matter how many frozen lakes he jumped in or how many feet of snow he trained in, it's him and Ben Askren, and that's it. It's another frigid five-degree day in Siberia, and Coach Flamenco has directed star pupil Andrei Korishkov to chip the ice away from the front steps of the gym. A far cry from the morning routine of his American opponent. It's morning in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Here, Bellator's welterweight champion, Ben Askren, is sitting down to some pancakes with his wife, Amy, and their four-month-old daughter, 
Alex. She's been able to balance like this since like one month. She just, hands her off like a football. She's just She'll a freaking powerful baby, you know? She's just strong. <laughs> There's nothing about it. Right, Alex? Are you strong? Ben is deep into his training camp for his July 31st title defense against Andre Korishkov. And if he's even slightly worried about the fight, he's not exactly showing it. And no disrespect to his opponent, but until a couple weeks ago, I didn't even know his first name. So that's how little we discuss it. If it's 8 p.m. in Siberia right now, I bet Andre's probably playing video games or sleeping or drinking some vodka, maybe. Vodka, a lot of it. The truth is, nothing much has ever phased Askren. Known as Funky Ben in college, his nickname was born of his unconventional approach to wrestling, a style that embodies his personality, fueled a four-year run of dominance at Missouri, and earned him a spot on the 2008 U.S. Olympic team. Grand U.S. Olympian, maybe the best wrestler in U.S. collegiate history in the last 10 years, national champion. This guy's got every piece of the arsenal. He kind of had this, like a bundle of snakes rolling around. You're never really sure who's got who, and then all of a sudden he'd come out on top and he's pinning a guy. It was fun to watch, hard to deal with as a competitor. He just had a unique, innate sense of the mat. He's figuring out how wrestling can dominate this mixed martial arts sport right now. And it looks like Funky Ben has it all figured out. He is a world champion who seems more unbeatable with each successive trip to the cage. A fact that was abundantly clear in his last title defense in January, where he destroyed the challenger, Karl Amasu, with a relentless ground and pound attack. What you get from Ben Askren is five rounds of affirmation that he whipped your ass. You know, he got humbled. That's what Ben calls his wrestling style. I'm gonna humble you, and he humbled them. He humbles his opponents, yes. But otherwise, humble is a word you'll rarely hear used about Askren. You know, if you don't like the groundwork, there's a sport they call boxing. It's not as fun, though. I suggest you keep on coming here and watching my ass whippings. They were booing because they wanted to see the stand-up and banging. It was the Canadian fans, you know, they're really kind of rough around the edges. And, you know, they didn't appreciate the fact that another grown man who didn't want to be on his back, on his back for 25 minutes and uh, repeatedly punched him in the face. Look, some guys are cocky. Some guys are just purely confident. He's a little bit salty. But I think he's salty because people continue to poke at him in terms of evolving as a mixed martial artist. We got these Siberian Huskies that Ben's fighting. I watch the guys like to spin a lot. So the two rules of thumb when you defend the spin, a lot of people lean away. Well, that's boom. I give them room. I see him spin side. You see, you see how you step with the spin. So if you see him go backside clockwise, like a matador, move. Good. Oh, put in the funk. Good step. Whoop, there you go. Good work, good work, good work. I, I thought the pace was real good today. Uh, how's your weight? Good? Yeah, everything's going good. Weight's coming down. Uh, we talked about the, you know, the right hand, obviously, uppercut and overhead. Anything else, Stink? I mean, just, you know, got to read your keys on the spins, but if you pressure him and stay on top of him, he doesn't have room to do that stuff. But we've been talking about it for weeks now. Been drilling it. You're looking great on the pads and the sparring. And now it's just down the home stretch, execute. All right, yeah, sounds like a plan. As always, Askren feels confident that he's prepared for Korishkov. Of course, a large part of his confidence is born of the belief that his style simply defies preparation. I wouldn't fight him. <laughs> I wouldn't sign a contract fighting Ben Askren. If he moved down to 55, I'm going to 45 for sure. He's that good. I mean, training with this guy, it's, it's frustrating. If, uh, if it's the first round of sparring, and I spar with Ben Askren, in the rest of the rounds, I don't have any energy left. Just defending takedowns, trying to get on top of this guy. He's that good. That's not me just boasting because he's my teammate. That's, that's, from, that's real life. I mean, I wouldn't fight this guy. There's three for sure things in life, death, taxes, and Ben Askren taking you down. The scariest thing about Korshkov is that right hand. He's got power, he's got timing, he can put anybody out in this division. Andre, I'm gonna walk across the cage, I'm gonna grab you, I'm gonna throw you on your back, I'm gonna hit you in your face, and there's not really anything you can do about that. The next and possibly most difficult chapter of the Russian invasion is about to be written in MMA. 
As Andre Korishkov moves towards his July 31st bout with Bellator's welterweight champion, Ben Askren. It's a fight that will be closely watched in Korishkov's homeland. A few important steps were taken last year when for Bellator events, they started to show them on Russia's biggest national sport television. And uh, the recent success of all Russian team, it just uh, makes this sport to become more and more popular. For Korishkov, the Askren fight is a chance to gain the utmost respect for Russian fighters, while at the same time winning a world title. For Askren, it's a chance to continue to serve notice to any who still dare to doubt him. The stakes are high for Ben Askren in terms of respect. I think that last win he had, ground and pound, devastating win over Karl Amasu, people woke up and took notice of Ben Askren after that fight. He wants another win like that. Not just a win, he wants a finish. Andre Korshkov carries with him a lot of pride into this fight. So the stakes are very high. We already have two Russian world champions. He wants to join that elite group. They don't like losers, you know. It's not in the, in the vocabulary, you know. Korshkov, if he loses to Askren, he's in for a rough time back at home, man. You have no idea what Slamenko's going to do for him. If Korshkov is going to avoid that fate, he'll have to avoid being smothered by Askren's wrestling-based attack. A style that's gained Askren many critics over the years, including his next opponent. Oh, still, still Ben Askren, of course, is very difficult. And I don't like to watch his fights, because in his fights you can just sleep. They're very difficult. The only thing my opponents can say about me is I'm boring. They can't say anything because I take him down and I beat him up. He doesn't show a nice fight, right? In general, he wins because of the decision of the judge. I think this matchup between Korshkov and, and Askren boils down to the classic striker versus grappler matchup. And you're dealing with a guy in Korshkov that can hit. He, he can knock guys out. Of course, history shows that even when Askren's opponents manage to get up off their backs, they usually find themselves taken down again pretty soon afterwards. There's three for sure things in life. Death, taxes, and uh, Ben Askren taking you down. There's the sprawl, and there's the first takedown. He's going to do what he did to Carl Amasu. I mean, I'm going to win the fight 99 times out of 100, and one time out of 100, he's going to hit a right hand and knock me out. But, you know, you're not going to worry about one time out of 100. So, what, you know, I'm just training and doing what I do, and it's probably going to go really well. Koreshkov is the toughest test that Ben Askren has faced inside the Bellator cage to date. He's got great reach and incredible punching power. His kickboxing arsenal is expansive. He never gives up. He knows how to get back up when he's taken down. He presents real problems for Ben Askren. He is the guy who potentially may be the one to solve the riddle that is Ben Askren. In the first two minutes, if Andre Korshkov can stay on his feet and stuff two or three takedowns, he's got a good shot in this fight. That's when the fans will go, oh man, Ben Askren's got a fight. We studied very carefully all of the Ben Askren's fights, all the mistakes that his opponents made. We have this secret ingredient that I won't tell you because otherwise it won't be a secret. But uh, I think Andre has abilities that would allow him to actually beat Ben Askren. А в стойке, думаю, Бен ничем не удивит Андрея. Как я планирую, что Бен будет делать очередной проход и нарвется на встречный удар, и после этого он уже проиграет нокаут. I'm going to favor Askren. He is the champ for a reason. Once he gets his hands on you, he can do nasty things. But if you think Koreshkov is outmatched, think again. When that cage door closes and uh, Ben's in there facing his opponent, nothing else matters. His team's not in there. It doesn't matter how many frozen lakes he jumped in or how many feet of snow he trained in. It's him and Ben Askren, and that's it. Andre, I'm going to walk across the cage. I'm going to grab you. I'm going to throw you on your back. I'm going to hit you in your face. And there's not really anything you can do about that. If Koresh Khan can win this fight, and it solidifies Russia as one of the true powerhouses worldwide in terms of mixed martial arts. The Russian invasion is going to be bigger and bigger. Our goal is to become the strongest team in the world.